Welcome class. We're going to get started and um, today we're going to be talking about lesson 1-5 and that is going to cover adding and subtracting decimals. So let's get right to it. Alright, first off, let me back up just a little bit here. Alright, so rule number one is if we're going to be adding a couple of decimals together, there are three very important words that are going to be very helpful um, in, um, in setting up the problem so that we can be successful. Okay, So kind of like we're playing hangman again, um, those three words, let's think about it. Um, we're, I'll start you here with the last one. Okay, The last word is up. Okay, And as you can see, I'm already starting to write in that first word. Um, so if you haven't already guessed, the trick is to line them up. Okay, And by that, what I mean is line them up by the decimal points. Okay, So this little yellow box here, um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to line up the decimals 3.026 plus 4.7 plus 1.38. And what we're going to do is instead of writing them horizontally like they are now, we're going to line them up vertically and we're going to line them all up so that the decimal points all line up. Okay, So you can see when I write them vertically 3.026, 4.7, and 1.38, um, in all three cases, we have a nice lined up ones place and the tenths place and the decimals line up. Now you also notice that because the bottom two numbers are a little bit shorter, there's nothing over to the right of them. Well, we can fix that by going ahead and just um, adding in some extra zeros so that we kind of fill up the column. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to start at the right, follow the white arrow, and we're going to add up the first column. Okay, and we're going to get um, six. We're going to add the second column, 2 plus 8 is 0, so we carry to 1. Okay, that's already written in. And then we're going to add 1 plus 7 and 3 and get 11. We'll carry another 1. And we're going to finally add up the, the first column, we're going to get 9. So the correct answer here is 9.106. Okay? And again, um, the trick to lining up de or to adding decimals is to make sure that we line them up by place value. So each column is going to be the same place value. Okay. Now you don't have to add in the black zeros if you don't want to. I personally think they're very helpful. Okay. So that's rule number one, and that's really the main rule. So remember that for your daily quiz. Um, but if I ask you, what are the three main, you know, what are the key three words for how to add decimals? The trick is to line them up. Okay. All right. Well, let's go ahead and continue here. Um, that is rule number one, rule number two, rule number three. That's really the whole deal. Okay, well, let's move on for a second here, and um, let's talk about the properties of addition. Now, there's three properties we're going to talk about. The first is commutative, the second is associative, and the third is the identity property of addition. Okay, so let's go through each of these, and let's talk a little bit about um, what they mean. Um, and let's start with the commutative property. All right, the commutative property... Um, basically says that 3 plus 7 equals 7 plus 3. And we can do this for any two numbers. If you add two numbers together and then reverse the order that you're adding them in, you get the same thing. Now, the way I like to remember the commutative property, think about when you drive back and forth from uh, home to school every day. Okay, That's called your daily commute. Same thing with your parents driving back and forth to work. All right, now assuming that you take the same streets on the way here to school as you do on the way back to your house, um, the distance traveled is the same in both directions. Well, likewise, if I change the direction of 3 plus 7 and make it into 7 plus 3, I still get the same answer. Either way, it comes out to be 10. Okay? Now, the second property is the associative property. Okay? And the associative property, think about what associate means. Okay? Um, sometimes your parents tell you to make sure you choose your friends well because you want to associate with people who are going to be positive role models in your life. Okay, associative has to do with groupings. Okay, so take for instance again. Um, let's take three numbers: three plus four plus five. Okay, and let's say that I drew parentheses around the first two numbers. All right, so we're going to group those together. That would mean, by order of operations, that that's going to get done first. So three plus four is seven, and then we're going to add in the five, and we'll end up with twelve. All right, now let's see what happens though if we take the same numbers: three plus four plus five. And this time, let's group the 4 and the 5 together. All right. Now, in that case, the 4 plus 5 gets done first. That gives us 9. And then we add the 3 in. 
Well, we still get 12. So regrouping the numbers that were being added together um, didn't change the sum in either problem or in, on either side. In both cases, we come out with 12. All right? That is called the associative property of addition. Okay? So remember the commutative property by commuting back and forth, the direction doesn't matter. Okay? The associative property by grouping different numbers together as long as it's all addition. Okay? Now if we start throwing in subtraction and multiplication and division and we start moving parentheses around, it will matter. But if everything happening in the problem is an addition, we can go ahead and move the parentheses around, change the association, and it still stays the same sum. Finally, we've got the identity property of addition. And the identity property of addition is basically what number can we add to a number, like 3.6, and not change it. So let's go ahead and look at this little equation here with a little happy box. Remember we talked about how um, that is probably the very first variable you ever saw when you were in uh, probably kindergarten or first grade. And so the question is, what number can I put in there to make that true? What number can you add to 3.6 and still have 3.6? Well, I think you probably have realized the only number that you can do that with um, in our math system is zero. Okay? So, oops. Sorry. Hold on. Let me stop and go back for a second here. All right. Oh. All right. So there we go. So those are your three properties of addition, the commutative, the associative, and the identity property of addition. Okay? And again, those are three properties you're probably going to need to remember for tomorrow's daily quiz. Um, and or maybe remember which one uh, is which, what they do. Okay? Um, so if you need to rewatch this or come back to this slide and kind of pause it and um, think about these three properties, um, that would probably be a good idea. Um, but we're going to go ahead now and let's go ahead forward. And let's talk about how we can use these properties. Okay, so here's a couple examples. All right, suppose I give you a problem like 74 plus 19 plus 1. All right, well, we could start from the left and go ahead and do that first 74 plus 19 first. We could do that, um, but that's going to be um, kind of a tricky problem that's going to involve some carrying. So what if instead we regroup and we group the 19 and the 1 together? Well, how does that change things? Well, if we do the 19 plus 1 first, that's, that's easy. That's 20, right? Now, 74 plus 20, well, 20 is a lot easier number to add than 19, even though it's bigger. Um, I can do that in my head pretty quick. So now I get 74 plus 20, and that's going to equal 94. And I'm done. So if I'm doing mental math in particular, and we don't always... Um, promote mental math. We really do want to show our work a lot in, um, in math, but sometimes it is beneficial to do things in our minds. And when we do, using properties like the associative and commutative property um, can be really helpful. Well, let's take a look at another example. Suppose I give you a 5.92 plus 0.4 plus 0.308. Okay? And um, again, I could go ahead and I could use like we did on the first slide. I could line these up and we could line up the ones places and the decimals and the tenths and we could add it all up and we would get the right answer. But suppose I just switch the second two numbers, the 0.4 and the 3.08. Now I end up with 5.92 plus 3.08 plus 0.4. Now you might think, well, what does that help me with? Well, look at those first two numbers that I just underlined. All right? Look at 0.92 and 0 0.08. Well, they fit together perfectly. Those decimals kind of cancel each other out and give us 1. So I've got the whole numbers of 5 plus 3, plus the decimals give me another 1. That's going to equal 9. And now I end up with just 9, okay, um, plus 0.4. And 9 plus 0.4 is just 9.4. And that's all there is to it. All right, let's look at one last one, all right? What if I have 7 plus 17 plus negative 7? Again, let's do the same thing we did in the last problem. This time, let's reverse the second two numbers, the 17 and the negative 7, which will give us 7 plus negative 7 um, plus 17. Well, again, what good does this do? Well, look at the first two numbers. 7 and negative 7, those are opposites. They cancel each other out. That's going to leave me with 0 plus 17, 
which is just 17. And that's what we talk about with that identity property of 0. If we add 0 to anything, it's kind of common sense. Um, but sure enough, um, it is a property. And if we know it's a property and we work towards it, we can find things sometimes that cancel out like this. Okay, So these are all examples of how to use um, these properties, the commutative, the associative, and the identity properties. All right, now, that was all about adding decimals. What if we're subtracting decimals? Well, guess what? Same three words. Okay, So once again, the way we're going to subtract decimals okay, is we're going to line them up. Okay, and so um, and again, that's just a quick way to say. So instead of line them up, a lot of times I'll ask people real quickly, um, "What do you do to add or subtract decimals?" And all you got to say is line them up. All right. So um, let's take an example: fifty um, minus seven point eight six. So again, I drew a little uh, yellow box. So let's go ahead and line these up, and we're going to draw the fifty, and we're going to put minus seven point eight six. Okay, and this time it's not optional. We're going to need to add those zeros, and I'll show you why. In order to subtract this time, we need to subtract the 0.86. Well, there's nothing above them, and so what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to do some borrowing. Okay, so let me go ahead and slow this um, this down. What we're going to do is we're going to try to borrow for that first zero, and there's nothing to borrow for the two zeros. So we've got to go all the way over to the five. We borrow it becomes four, and then. Uh, as I bring 1 across, the first zero actually became 10. But the very next thing I'm going to do is cross it out and borrow from it. And so that's why I just put a 9 in in blue. Similarly, that first black zero also really technically became 10. But then when I borrow from it, it's going to go back to 9. Now the last one does become 10. So don't make the mistake of putting 9, 9, and then a third 9 all the way across. Okay, the only reason I put those first two 9s in um, was to just save a little minor step. All right. Now we can subtract because we're trying to take 6 away from 10. So we can do that. We'll go ahead and subtract down. We'll start from the right and we get 4. 9 minus 8 is 1. 9 minus 7 is 2. And 4, there's nothing to subtract it from. So we get 42. Bring that decimal down, 0.14. Okay. And again, the trick was simply to line up the decimal points and line up the places. Okay. So just like with adding, when we're subtracting, we're going to line them up. Okay. And there was our answer, 42.14. All right. This last slide, um, this is a question I keep getting asked in class. So let's talk about this word for just a moment, moment simplify. All simplify is asking you to do is take a kind of complicated math problem where maybe you've got some addition, subtraction, maybe you've got to use some of these properties, okay, maybe you've got to do some, some work. Um, but ultimately what we want you to do is do all the operations, um, simplify it as much as you can. If there's anything that you can still do to make it a little simpler, um, go ahead and do that. So that basically equates to taking um, a mathematical expression, especially if it's numerical, with just a bunch of numbers, and performing the order of operations or doing the arithmetic to get the right answer. Okay, So simplify basically means just come up with an answer. Um, so for an answer, some, something, let's say you reduce something down to 3 plus 7. Well, don't stop there. Go ahead and finish. So what is 3 plus 7? We can make that a little simpler by just saying 3 plus 7 is 10. All right, well, we're already getting a little long here in the recording, and I'd like to wrap this up. Um, so that's going to be the end of this video. Um, thank you very much uh, for following along and watching, um, and uh, we'll see if we're not a little bit more successful getting this up on YouTube. So I'll see you in class tomorrow. Goodbye, class.